Okay, hi, we're gonna talk about fructose. This will be fructose part one, introduction to fructose. We'll cover the main things you need to know. Uh, fructose, we all think of fructose at first as being related to fruit, and it can be a good thing of fruits. You know, a typical apple or orange only has about four grams of fructose. It comes packaged with all the fiber, vitamin C, those are good things, and it's fructose in a small amount. You have to chew it. Um, and then your gut has to peel off that fiber before it's absorbed. On the other hand, fructose in processed foods is bad uh, because you get a giant bolus of fructose. One 12 ounce can of soda pop could have 50 grams of fructose in it. And it primarily, after your intestine absorbs it very rapidly, it goes through the portal vein which connects the gut to the liver and there's a very high percentage extraction of almost all of that fructose by your liver. And then what your liver does is it takes the fructose, phosphorylates it, and then it goes into glycolysis at about you know, the DHAP 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde stage. This is after the six carbon sugars like glucose and fructose have broken down into three carbon sugars. And the key point about all this is it's subsequent to the, the big regulatory step, PFK, phosphofructokinase enzyme. And what that means is fructose just hits the liver as a bolus. There's no regulatory control of it. And after it's phosphorylated, this adenosine triphosphate goes to adenosine diphosphate and then adenosine M for monophosphate. And this actually progresses all the way to uric acid. Uric acid can be written as urate, it's a deprotonated form of it. And the point is that you very rapidly will drop your ATP amount in your liver cells and you'll make a lot of urate. The urate gets into the blood, it'll inhibit endothelial nitric oxide, you'll decrease nitric oxide, and then that leads to vasoconstriction, which is associated with hypertension. In addition, some scientists, including some of the best atherosclerosis researchers in the world, they think that urate can function as a bridging molecule along the lines of what fibrinogen does or LDL cholesterol and IgM antibodies to stick red blood cells together by overcoming their zeta potential. We'll talk about that a lot more in the atherosclerosis lectures, but the point is it's a potential bridging molecule for producing Rouleau, which contributes to hypertension. Anything that causes hypertension increases your risk of atherosclerosis. Uh, we'll go through the mechanisms of all that in the atherosclerosis lecture. But anyways, urate, everybody knows, increases your risk of gout. It's a type of inflammatory arthritis, can be very painful. Um, and by the way, there's been an industrialization of the food supply, especially in the past about 140 years or so. It was back about 1880 when they first introduced the vegetable oils like cottonseed oil. It's around 1910 when they introduced trans fats. First recorded myocardial infarction was within a year of introducing trans fats into the diet. And they started having more and more refined sugar in the diet around the 1900 and subsequent to that. But the point that I'm saying is you'll read about guys from hundreds of years ago having gout. And that'll be like the really rich people, the aristocrats. They got the money to eat meat every day. Other people didn't. But there was no high fructose corn syrup back in those days. And the point I'm saying is gout did exist and there were fat people. Much less common than today. There weren't that many people wealthy enough to eat that way. Okay, and it's much worse now that fructose is so omnipresent. In addition, the uric acid puts a little bit of an increased risk of kidney stones in and of itself. Um, but that's a key thing. You rapidly will deplete the AP and make the uric acid. So uric acid, you can think of it as a waste product of uh, these nucleotides. And it comes also from the purines to get it from eating meat, but also from the fructose for this reason. Okay, what else happens? Well, now the three carbon skeleton that's now entered into glycolysis at the three carbon phase, it goes down through pyruvate and you'll make acetyl-CoA, but actually there's too much of it. The liver doesn't have anything to do with it. It doesn't want to push it through Krebs cycle. So instead it takes those acetyl-CoA units and it diverts them into fatty acid th synthesis. That's why drinking fructose in a liquid drink, a soda pop or an energy drink, it's like drinking liquid fat because almost all of it's gonna get made into fat and that causes fatty liver. Fatty liver is bad. Fatty liver is the beginning of diabetes, and diabetes is the beginning of being severely sick and debilitated in Alzheimer's. You don't want those things. Fatty liver is so common. If I ever see a requisition, um, well, we won't even go into it, but trust me, fatty liver is so common. It's, I would say more than half the people I see over 50 have fatty liver. All right, next thing is serum ferritin. Serum ferritin will be increased. Liver stores a lot of iron. Some of these cells will necrose and they'll release their ferritin. Ferritin is the intracellular binding protein. It binds about 4,000 uh, iron molecules per ferritin. Um, it'll also increase your cholesterol. So fructose does increase cholesterol. It does cause fatty liver. It does lead to hypertension. Another mechanism whereby fructose leads to hypertension is that 
Fructose causes increased reabsorption of sodium in the kidneys, so your sodium goes up in your blood. It also causes increased absorption of sodium from your gut. Things that increase sodium tend to increase intravascular blood volume, plus sodium in and of itself is a vasoconstrictor, um, lowering the levels of nitric oxide. So you got all these things going in the wrong direction. You're lowering your nitric oxide, which is the good thing in your arteries to vasodilate them. You know, what does Viagra do? Viagra dilates the arteries into Johnson, okay? So you want, you want nitric oxide being available, not being inhibited. And that's the reason why fructose is bad. It makes you fat and it predisposes you to obesity and diabetes and all the things that go down the path from hypertension, which means atherosclerosis, myocardial infarction, and stroke. And diabetes itself is really a precursor lesion of all these terrible metabolic conditions, including blindness, peripheral vascular disease, and eventually Alzheimer's.